Welcome to Food Shorts again. I know I'm in the bedroom, I'm not in the kitchen because I wanted to show you my new Cub socks that the manager of Archibald's gave me, Archibald's, uh, in Holly Springs. I played there this past weekend and uh, he realized I was a Cubs fan and, and said, man, I've been trying to get rid of these socks for a while. So anyway, he gave me my Cub socks and my Cubs hat came in the mail, which you've seen some of you. So we're gonna get in the kitchen though. And we're gonna do something kind of different to something that we've already done, meaning that I've made grilled tuna for you before, but I'm, I'm adding a little something to it this time. Uh, so I'm gonna do grilled tuna again, but that's not gonna be the focus of our meal tonight. It's going to be mostly on the salad and a new side dish that maybe some of you have never heard of. I hadn't heard of it until uh, just a few years ago. So uh, I'm gonna show you that right now. So let's get in the kitchen and get to work. All right, so Cubs lost yesterday, five to nothing against St. Louis, uh, but it was still, I wound up watching the game on the DVR. Um, I was highly disappointed, so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we, we do some better things this week. All right, but aside from all that, let's get away from that. I'm not gonna go into sports again and go through that with you guys. I wanted to introduce you, uh, maybe Yingling Light. Uh, there is Yingling, of course. That's one of my favorite, regular, just go-to beers. I don't, I'm not a grab a Budweiser or Bud Light kind of guy. I'll drink it if that's all that's available, but. Uh, that's not my go-to thing, of course, but Yingling is one of my go-tos. But they are now sporting a new look for the light beer. So this is the Yingling Light logos. So that's kind of new. Uh, they started that, but I'm not going to be drinking that right now. I did pick up uh, one of my favorite local breweries, of course. Uh, this is in Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina. The Aviator, which you have you probably heard me talk about. I do play there quite often. It's a really cool place. Um, but this one is their IPA called Hog Wild. Like hog, like a motorcycle or a pig. Hog Wild. Uh, it's a great beer. So we're gonna throw that in our trusty little bell mug. And we're gonna go to town on this sucker while we start to prepare uh, our salad. And I'm gonna tell you what I did to the tuna. Just look at this golden color. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's foaming up really nice. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Cheers, everybody. So initially, when I bought the tuna, I uh, bought a big slab of it. I went ahead and put some garlic salt on there and just a, a, a dash of low sodium soy sauce. Just a little bit of that in the bag, some salt and pepper and that type of thing. Uh, so real, real just basics, generics. Put it in the uh, Ziploc bag, labeled it and froze it. And uh, once we were ready to eat, I decided to take it out to, uh, yesterday and let it thaw out. And so then, once it's, it's been thawed out, it still was in the bag that I had here. Uh, Lindsay kind of turned me on to some really cool stuff. This is toasted sesame oil. Now this stuff uh, is amazing. Now, first of all, if you've ever had sushi or if you like sushi, uh, you can order a side thing for sushi called spicy mayo. And we make it here, Lindsay makes it here. And now I, I've learned how to, to, to make her version of it which to me has wound up being better than most of the restaurants that we ordered our sushi from, so now we only just make our own. And it's because she adds enough of the toasted sesame oil that gives it this game-changing flavor. I mean, it is stupid. And of course, she puts a dash also of the low-sodium uh, soy sauce, and then uh, she likes to use the Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. You don't want to use uh, you know, like Miracle Whip or whatever, unless that's the flavor that you want, because each mayonnaise does have a little bit of separate flavor. So Hellman's Real Mayonnaise will grab and sriracha, of course, is where you get your heat from. It's uh, basically a, kind of a ketchup-based product, but uh, this is also used in a lot of Japanese uh, cooking that we do because it's nice and hot. It's got a good kick to it, and that's where you get the spicy part of the mayo from. But then when you add the toasted sesame oil, I'm telling you, game changer, just go get you some. But you don't kill it. You just dash it in there and, and do it to taste. We kept dipping until we're like, yeah, we're, we, we got the consistency that we wanted, the heat that we wanted. So you want more heat, you add more sriracha, you want more just creaminess, you add more mayonnaise, you want, uh, you like the, the sesame oil and you want more of that, you know, whatever flavor you want to be the strongest and dominant flavor, that's what you add. Well, I also put a splash of that on the tuna now that it's thawed out in this bag and I, I put a little bit of there and I also then ahead and went, uh, back and put another splash of the low sodium soy sauce. So I'm letting that continue to sit in here before I throw that on the grill. That's the only different thing that I'm doing to the tuna. It should be amazing. Uh, I will show you that later, of course. But uh, I'm not gonna so much focus on that. I just wanted you to know about the sesame oil. I'm taking too long to describe everything, so I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna start cutting up some veggies here and get our salad ready, and I'm gonna show you what we're doing with that. 
So I'm gonna do real quick for the salad. I'm kind of doing some of the same ingredients that you've seen before only. The lettuce that I got is called, uh, the, it's the organic power greens, which means this has just a lot of good green stuff in it. I've, obviously, uh, I've told you before about iceberg lettuce. There's real no nutritional value in there. Uh, but there is nutritional value in every other lettuces, but the darker the green it is, of course, the better it is for you, uh, the more nutrients that it has. And of course, we have our uh, Italian dressing that we make with olive oil and apple cider vinegar and uh, an Italian seasoning package and a little bit of water. I also neglected to tell you that I put a splash of that in this bag with the tuna as well. Um, so as weird as this may sound, it's actually going to be really good. It'll have a nice tang to it. It'll give it kind of a lemony type of thing. We're still doing regular bag peppers. I'm gonna cut these up and I've got a nice cucumber we're gonna cut up. But something different my sister did when we went for Mother's Day, she had pear in her salad, and uh, she let me have a pear to bring home. I hadn't really done that, I hadn't really tried that. So uh, we're gonna put some pear in there, and it's gonna be amazing, because it was amazing yesterday. And then, the other cool thing, instead of goat cheese, that's my go-to cheese for, for salad, uh, goat cheese, go-to cheese. Um, but my brother-in-law gave me some gorgonzola cheese, which is kind of a blue cheese base. It's what it looks like, it's blue cheese, but we're gonna crumble some gorgonzola in there, which is amazing cheese. And that's something different that uh, I like. I haven't done this in a while. This, this, when I used to go to the grocery store and see this, I was like, what the heck is that? You know, I didn't know what it was. This is ginger root. And basically that's how it comes. You, you can get it by the pound in the grocery store, uh, whether it's fresh or whatever, you can break a piece off. I've seen little giblets in there a lot of times in the basket when it's starting to run low. But I just grab a little piece of it and we're just gonna shave some, kind of like we do garlic on the salad of it and just gives it some extra flavor. Ginger's good for you, uh, keeps you regular. and uh, <laughs> So we wanna make sure and get some of that in our diet as well. So we're gonna move on. I am going to start cutting this stuff up and I'm gonna heat up the grill and I'm gonna start making the salad. We're gonna get ready to chow down. I do believe it's time for another. I need another sip. Oh, I'm wild, baby. Either my mother asked me how to cut an avocado. She had never, uh, apparently, didn't, didn't know the process. And it made me start thinking that there could be some of you out there who don't know how to do it. I think I've showed you on this program before, but basically you just want to look at your avocado. You're wanting to feel the, the, how soft it is. And then, of course, if it starts getting too ripe after leaving it on the counter and leaving it outside, it will make it riper faster. And if you want to stop the process of ripening, that's when you put it in the fridge. I kind of go to the top of here, like almost like if it's a pear, and I just make a slit because there is a gigantic seed inside of here. It'll stop on that seed. And then at that point, I just roll my knife around until I reach the other side. Once I've done that, Slowly peel it apart. And it's beautiful, it is gorgeous. There's no brown, there's no over ripening. It is an absolute gorgeous piece. After that, okay, we make lines. You just keep doing that. Make your little lines. So once you've made your lines, now you take your spoon and you wanna scoop every bit of this out. So I try to get that sucker right on the edge there. And you just start rolling it around in that half circle there. Ah. But what I'm left with is nice, beautiful slices of my avocado. And these are the ones that I will put on the top of the salad. Now, some of you might not know how to get the seed out. You might struggle with that. I usually take my bigger knife. This is kind of my chopping knife. And you wanna watch your hands. Of course, you wanna be very careful when you're doing this. But if you give it a good little snap in there, and now it's lodged in, and just twist, and that sucker will come right out. So real quick, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the ginger root that I have, and I'm gonna take my trusty grater, of course, that uh, you wanna be careful, because this is very, very sharp. and. Kind of like Rachel Ray does, you know, with her garlic and she even does it with the same thing here, the little ginger. We're just gonna scrape a little bit of that in there. We're not trying to kill the salad, we're just trying to add to the flavor and the nutrition. Real quick, I wanna remind you, uh, the rest of the cucumber that I had, I put it in a Ziploc bag. And air is our enemy when it comes to food. Uh, keeping stuff, stuff fresh. So I try to zip this up about, you know, most of the way there. I leave a little opening. And then I take my mouth, seal it up real quick, and I've now vacuum sealed this. 
I think I showed you that once before, but that'll help keep it a lot fresher than it does if you just put it in an ear bag. All right, I'm almost done doing everything. I'm gonna go throw this tuna on the grill and plate this food. This is couscous. It's real easy. It's almost like rice in a bag or in a box or whatever. Um, there's instructions on the back. Just follow the instructions. It's pretty simple. Uh, one and a quarter cups of uh, water. Bring it to a boil along with some olive oil. You put in the seasoning packet just like you would rice or anything else. And then after it boils, you add the couscous. Pull it off from the heat. Let it sit for five minutes. Blam. Couscous. Couscous is cooking. Lindsay just got home. I'm going to finish grilling the tuna. And we're going to be done. And I'm going to show you everything on the plate in just a minute. We've got our couscous, which you can see is fluffed up nicely. Put that on our plate. You can add a little spray butter, a little salt and pepper if you want, but I got a flavored couscous, so it was absolutely delicious. And of course, our tuna looks amazing. However, I did cook it a little bit longer than I wanted to. I actually a lot longer than I wanted to because I normally like it pretty raw inside, uh, but at least there's a nice little stripe. This, this would be considered medium uh, right now, but I prefer medium rare and sometimes rare. So, but look at the nice grill marks that we've got on here. The flavor, I have already tried it. It is amazing. Then we have our salad. Nice and colorful, very green. We've got the white chunks of the gorgonzola uh, cheese and the raisins and everything on here, minus tomatoes. We'll put a little salt and pepper on that, a little dressing, and we're gonna be good to go. And of course we have our homemade spicy mayo, which I told you was done with mayo, sriracha, the toasted sesame oil, and a splash of low sodium soy sauce, and oh my gosh, the flavor of this stuff is so good, and it'll be really good on your tuna. You just put a little bit on here. Mm. It's got a little bite, a little heat. It's phenomenal. Guys, check out our plates. Bon Appetit. Thanks for watching Food Shorts. I'm Johnny. See you next time. Well, here you go. There's the couscous. There's the tuna. There's my spicy mayo and some wasabi. And oh my gosh, we are ready to chow down. Thanks, guys. Happy girl.